walking in the spirit, walking in line with the spirit. That's our topic again this uh, this uh, morning. Uh, friends out there, we I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. The whole purpose of what uh, I am doing here is working with the Lord to convey to you the scriptures, convey th to you through basic practical teaching the scriptures, the word of the living God, the inspired word of God. If you don't accept and believe that these are the words of God in the Bible, then you might as well just, uh, uh, just turn the other way because you're not going to hear from God. I believe the Bible was written by men as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. It's lasted a long time, my friends. And I'm here to bring you the faithful, everlasting word of God. The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. What's he saying? My word shall never pass away. Well, you could think of it as Jesus is the living word and he is eternally in the, in, with the Father. And he is the living word. But he's saying the word that is so often that, that has been spoken. The word that is spoken and gone out, that is what God is referring to. It shall not come back to him void. Friends, I beseech you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give heed to the word of God, for it is able to save your soul. Amen. Well, my name is Brian Reddish. If you didn't know, I'm here. Born in Derbyshire, actually. The the fourth son of a coal miner and uh, brought up in a very simple uh, life in the outdoors but went on to study at university uh, uh, mathematics and teach for th 37 years uh, at encouraging and strengthening people with that dreaded subject mathematics but here I am today and I'm teaching something very different something which I do all the time now I don't do the former but I do this. I teach and read and love the Word of God because it's been the power of God in my life to save me uh, from my sins, from my uh, worldly pursuits uh, of this world. And you're going to see today that the worldly pursuits, the world, when I say worldly pursuits, we're talking about the world as is, as is influenced and controlled by Satan. The Bible says, love not the world, meaning those institutions, that, that aspect of the world and the life out there. And so he's delivered me from that and, and brought me into the realm of his Holy Spirit, into the presence of God. That is not something that is far off. And so we're going to be talking again on walking in the Spirit. And this time we're going to look at the conflict. The conflict. What conflict? You will see. There is a conflict when you walk in the Spirit. Or, or as we saw last week, walking in line with the Spirit. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, 16, this is the verse. I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Do you see it? The conflict. It talks about it here, the flesh and, and lusts against the spirit. We're going to have a look at the words flesh and lusts, just to make sure we're clear in our minds what the Bible is talking about. Uh, because we can use these words casually in our everyday language. Uh, but when you come to the Bible, that's very similar in, 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 this, in this particular respect. But when you come to the Bible, you need to know the root meaning of what they are. Uh, and so last week, what did we do last week? We did walking in line by the Spirit of God. We saw three things. Walking in line with the Word of God. If you've got to walk in line with the Spirit, you've got to walk in line with the Word of God. You can't have one without the other. We're going to walk in line with the Spirit by acknowledging Jesus in all our ways by acknowledging God in all our ways so that everything we plan think and do is influenced by the spirit oh yes he's real he's here he's here in that sphere that is invisible around us he's there able to speak and reveal and talk and walk with us 
You just have to say, okay, Spirit, okay. I want to commit my work, the ways to you, Lord. I ask you to guide me and teach me. And if I make any decision, or I'm about to make a decision, it's not the best one. Lord, I want to acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge what you think and let you direct my ways. And thirdly, we saw walking in line with the Spirit was to pursue God's purposes for my life. We need a purpose. We need a hope. Uh, and the hope is to serve God in this world by presenting Jesus Christ through the talents that he's put within us to manifest ourselves to the world. Uh, and so these are the good works we saw that God had planted for us. Not to be confused with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which we did prior to that, which are external gifts which come upon us by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, that happened on the day of Pentecost. And so God has got so much for us. Let's get in there. Now, the words, I said I was going to talk about the words flesh, uh, uh, and actually there's another word similar to flesh called carnal. They're used widely in the scriptures, especially in the book of Romans chapter 8, but not exclusively. In fact, if you want to read about walking in the spirit, what it is, look at Romans chapter 8 from beginning to end. It's full of it. And everything I'm going to be talking about regarding the conflict is there in the book of Romans chapter 8. Now, the, but the Romans chapter 8, actually, verse 1 begins, There is therefore no condemnation now to those who are in Christ Jesus. I want you to realize there is no condemnation in, if you are coming to God through Jesus Christ. If you have received him and believed upon him and accepted him and consequently accept his word as the, the, the model and guide for you, then there is no condemnation. Because you've believed on the, the message that God has sent into this world. You believed on the, the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. It says, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's good news. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There's the, there's the, the, bit of the catch at the end, if you call it that. Because you see, you've got to face up to it. There's a conflict. Now, the word flesh. We did this in part one, uh, a spotlight on the word part one, session seven. But I'm going to go over it again, but in perhaps more detail. The Greek word is a Greek word called sarx, and literally means the flesh of the body, actually, as opposed to the soul or the spirit. And by implication, it refers to the natural man, the natural man and his human nature. Is remember his only flesh and blood, meaning his only uh, human being, his only uh, a, a person like that. However, in the scriptures, the word flesh is largely used as a metaphor to describe sinful tendencies. So in such cases, the word flesh would refer to man's sinful human nature. Sinful human nature? What, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. We were born with a sinful human nature. The soul that sins, it shall die, says the Lord. And what happens to every human being eventually? They die. Oh yes. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, says the scriptures. Every person. There's none righteous. No, not one, says the Lord. Not one. So don't single out people as being righteous in themselves through their own works, through their own contributions to life. They are not righteous before God. They may have had some good works, but they're not righteous. The only way to be made righteous is through Jesus Christ, who alone has paid the penalty for all your sin. And even in a sinful human nature that we're born with from Adam, God forgives you because he loves you. And when we do sanctification, probably next week, we're going to see that when you believe on Christ, the first act of sanctification, which basically means to separate, the first act is to separate you from this spiritual world of darkness and its kingdoms and translate you into the spiritual world of God, the kingdom of God. That is the first act of separation that takes place by God, not by you. You don't separate yourself by wearing going off as a hermit or no, you may physically but spiritually God separates you from the power of Satan to the power of God 
That's something you cannot do. Only God can do. That's why it's of grace and mercy. That's why your forgiveness and salvation is not based upon your good works. It's based upon Jesus Christ, who alone has paid the price by his shed blood, who alone has allowed God to do it. Friends, that's the most important teaching. You're saved by grace, not of works. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's good. I have to say to God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. That is good news. That's the gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the word flesh is largely used as a metaphor to describe sinful human nature and tendency. And so it's acquired at birth. Hence the meaning of Romans chapter 8 verse 1, like I've just read, becomes clearer. The child of God is not to walk in accordance to the flesh or the sinful old human nature, but according to the spirit. Now make no mistake. The nature you and I are born with stays with us until we die. And can you see that's why there's a conflict? You, you turn from your sin. You're translated by the Spirit into God's kingdom. You're born again. You have new desires and interests. You no longer want to sin anymore and do the old things of life, which, which were uh, like a stain upon your soul. You want to do the things that are acceptable to God. And pleasing to him and that's the conflict the old human nature doesn't die until you die but remember the spiritual nature that God gives you lives on forever it cannot die and so the word flesh we have shown is to be a metaphor meaning man's sinful human nature acquired at birth there is another word that is used in the scriptures as the same meaning as flesh and that is the word carnal again it refers to man's sinful human nature its passions and lusts in a similar way to the word flesh in scripture so this carnality this flesh the flesh and the and carnal mean the same thing and you can see the conflict is very much geared through our human nature to the things uh, that are uh, of that of the flesh of sinful human nature and and we associate the word lust with that because lust is essentially an intense longing for something, usually the forbidden thing. And, and if you imagine the passions and lusts uh, uh, of, of, of the sinful human nature, they, they seek uh, uh, towards the things that are forbidden. Just as Adam and Eve, remember? Uh, remember Eve? Uh, the Satan said to Eve, what did he say? Uh, 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 there are three things that he, he really attacked uh, he, uh, when he said this is this fruit will make you wise and it will open your mind and your heart to things of God and you'll be like it's look at it it's, look at it it's just look at it it's beautiful something to be desired and it will open your mind and your heart to be independent now oh, this is far better than what God has said this is this will make you special and the very three things Satan used were the lust of the flesh the lust of the flesh, the inkling towards something that is wrong. The lust of the eyes, the beauty and perception that they saw about it. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Something that will make us increase our esteem and make me somebody in the world uh, to, 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 to really exhibit. Oh yes, that was right from the beginning. And we're still involved in that conflict. And so, let us, let us stop a moment and think about it. Uh, am I walking in the Spirit of God? Am I turning aside from the things of the old nature and the old man? And let's, let's re real. Because that nature is there, they're going to pop up all the time. We're going to be tempted. There's nothing wrong with being tempted. It's yielding to temptation. It's doing the wrong thing that ultimately will, will get you catch you out once you've transgressed once you've done something wrong there is a, there is no uh, there's no remedy apart from repentance uh, and sometimes you can even carry a scar with you because of that uh, unwise choice and decision that you made even though you're now following the Lord you can still carry with you something that will remind you oh blessed friends and people 
let's just let's just pray I, I just pray now in the name of Jesus Christ as you're listening to this I know it's coming heavy perhaps upon your soul because you know you've done things wrong you know you've hurt and done things wrong and now you regret them but listen my brother my sister out there listen to me listen to me the Lord forgives you as you turn to him he forgives you what you must do is to bury the past and move on move on that's why Jesus died for your sin and you've realized you've sinned and done the wrong thing fear not God cleanses that there's a fountain filled with blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flow gone are their guilty stains so let me encourage you. I'm praying for you right now because this is a burden, but it doesn't have to be. Rolled away can be your burdens this morning. As you focus now on Jesus Christ, as you pay your allegiance to him, as you pray this prayer now, Lord Jesus, forgive me for the sins and mistakes I have made. They keep cropping up in my mind. Please forgive me and release me from its bondage. Release me from the guilt and power of sin release me O lord once and for all and I, I choose this day to turn my back upon those things and i choose this day to follow you lord jesus amen you know you say something like that and the devil flees from you did you know that he does you have the right to choose whom you're going to serve and you have the right to do that and as you speak that spoken word of the god speak it the devil will have to run from you he cannot come again he might come to tempt you again but you just have to say remember i said to you i choose i choose choose is a good word i choose to put my allegiance in the lord jesus christ depart from me and that will work believe you me brothers and sisters be of good courage be strong in the lord and in the power and strength of his might be of good remember the lord jesus said to the prostitute as she lay on the floor arise uh, he could have said be of good cheer go and sin no more oh jesus often said be of good cheer i'm here god bless you god bless you out there well i've talked about the carnal mind i'm going to read to you again from romans chapter 5 chapter 8 verses 5 to 8 for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh if you've come to Jesus and you are walking in the Spirit. This I say then, this is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 and verse 22 to 24. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. See the separation of the Spirit in the futility of their mind. And you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be, be, don't be surprised. Eve was deceived by Satan through the lusts of the flesh. You put off the, your, the former conduct, the old man, and gr which grows corrupt and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You will see in many ways that the conflict is the battlefield of the mind. It's the mind, what the mind is thinking, what the mind perhaps is in the soul are desiring. Subject them to the word of God is the way you have to go. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 and 4, it says something similar. Uh, these people, uh, I told you last week, was it the week before, about the Corinthian church, they were really in a mess regarding the gifts of the Spirit. 
They loved this. They loved the gift so much that they just lost control. They forgot about the word of God. They forgot about everything and everybody. They just played around with the gifts. And Paul had to come in and correct them. Uh, oh yes, you see, the, the gifts can be can spring off on a tangent to the flesh so that you become carnal in your thinking. Listen to what he said to the Corinthian church. I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. What he's saying, he's saying you really haven't turned away. You really have not started to walk in line with the word of God. You've come to God, you've received Christ, but you're whirling around in a pool of, of, of mire, wading around in a pool of mire uh, uh, and not coming out to follow and obey, obey the word of God. For where there is, as you, so he says they're carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Now, let me explain. They were, they were really carnal in their thinking. Uh, they were not seeing the true picture of the gospel of Christ. They would behave, they would have, there were strife and divisions. They could have been divided because I want to be, I want to be the leader's uh, second-hand man, not you. I want to be the, they were looking at themselves, puffing themselves up with positions, with pride, with arrogance. And, and they're even saying, look, I got baptized by Paul the Apostle. Uh, oh, well, I got baptized by, by Apollos, the great and mighty orator. Yeah, but I got baptized by Paul. Uh, and you see, carnal thinking, as if it doesn't, as if it mattered who baptized you, if as if that made you special. No, the ones who baptized you were not special. So how can it make you special? Oh, you see, the worldly thinking, the worldly concept of honor and prestige, when it's none of that. Jesus said, "If anybody would be great in the kingdom of heaven." Let them be a servant to all. That's the way of the kingdom. This was the way of the world, the spiritual world of darkness. The Satan who wants to puff you up and, and, and exhibit yourself as being the great. Oh yes, that's not of God. Carnal thinking in the church, in the church congregation. Carnal thinking happens, happens, doesn't it? Because the old human nature not being subject to the word of God. And so my friends, we have a lot. This is a really big subject and it's a powerful subject. And it's, it's, it's uh, it, in many ways, it's a tragedy. And I believe it grieves God's heart to see his children uh, going back like a dog returns to his vomit. They go back to play in the mire of, of, of the sludge of this world. You can't believe it, can you? But actually, the comparison was dog. Uh, and I remember, you know, I remember taking my auntie's dog for a walk. When I was a young lad, about 12, 11. I loved, we never had a dog, but I loved this, their dog, Kim. And she lived in Bullwell near Nottingham. And I used to take that dog out for a walk. It was lovely. I used to take it through a park. And then I thought, I'll take him off the lead. It'll be all right in the woods. So he, he was trotting around. And you know what dogs can be like if they're not, not normally let off the lead. They go a bit crazy. And do you know what? We were just going over this little tiny bridge, level with the ground. There's a stream running onto it. <coughs> and on the side of the stream were mud banks. Guess what's going to happen next? The dog jumps into the stream and rolls in the mud banks. <laughs> oh, dear. What was I going to do? My auntie was not too pleased when I took Kim home. And this is an awful description. And I, I'm only saying it because you wonder, might wonder what it means. As a dog returns to his vomit. The parallel meaning as you can suddenly return to the horrible things that you've done in the past instead of following God. And I once saw a dog vomit. 
and off he trotted. And do you know what? He stopped in his tracks, came all the way back and ate it all up. It's horrible. But the Bible says, as a dog returns to his vomit, so my people returning to their sinful ways. So my people are turning to the abhor that which is abhorrent and unclean and unhealthy and unholy. Come out from among them, says the Lord, and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. Notice the dog had to turn back, turn around, go back. And that's what happens when we back track when we go back to the old things and the old ways we are going back to to uh, to the taste of the abhorrent things to god oh yes i just thought i'd say that i hope that was all right but it's true it's true absolutely true you watch a dog uh, in its habits uh, they're unclean i'm afraid we love them don't we we love them the beautiful man's best friend they say but never forget what a dog is well, carnal they were in the Corinth church, carnal. Brothers and sisters, there's a, there's a word of warning here. As we go to the church to mix with the people of God, remember, it can very often be a mixed bag of people. Different spiritual levels. Different, even people who are not born again of the world. It's a mixed bag. It's a mixed net of fish that's been pulled out of the world. Remember to be on your God. You're there to seek God in his word. You're there to show love and be an example. Remember that. Well, summary and conclusions. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. That you do, do that you, so that you do not do the things you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Be led by the spirit and you will walk the way of the spirit. And he will teach you to obey the word of God on your way. This is the way walk you in it, uh, says the scripture. And so you see, it was a, it's a, a dilemma and, and a, it must be a, a pain to God because the word in 1 Peter 2 says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, you're not part of this world system anymore. You're a sojourner, you're a pilgrim. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conduct honourable among the Gentiles. So that, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. And so that is the conclusion. I beg you, as he says, as, as sojourners and pilgrims. You know... The works of the flesh, there's a, I, won't, I won't go into all of this, it's very negative, but it talks about the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5. And I'll give you the, guess what the first two, first three are. The works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, number one. Fornication, number two. Uncleanness, number three. Friends, look out there. What is happening and prevalent in the world? What is being accepted as the norm, even though it is against the word of God? Adultery. Now, does adultery bring peace and love? No, it splits up. It splits up. It separates things which God have brought joined together, perhaps. God was against adultery from the beginning and still is. You've got to be careful, brothers and sisters. If you're a born again, well... <laughs> I don't have to say any more. But you are to honour and put God against the lusts of the flesh towards another. Yes, they may be attracted by you, to you. They may be a man or a woman, you're attracted. Well, that's normal, but that's God has made things beautiful, so that's the attraction. But it's, if it becomes to the lust of the flesh, desiring to have red line. That's a red line. 
The child of God is not commanded to do that. He is commanded, as I've read, abstain from all fleshly lusts. Yes, I need go into it really, had I? Well, you know what I'm talking about. The temptations, even in the church, are there. Brothers and sisters, with the words of Peter, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul and have your conduct as honourable. And so there we are. There's the word of God. And I've got to pray again continually that we may learn to walk in the spirit. It is vital that we walk in line with the spirit. The spirit alone has the power to, against the enemy and, the, and the, uh, Satan. You see, when we are yielding to the lusts of the flesh, we're yielding to Satan's territory. You won't be able to fight it and you'll be, you can be lured into it. But when we, when we are goaded by the word of God and say, stop, I know the word of God is against this. If you know the word of God is against it, then you can stop in your tracks and say, no, I am going to choose to do the right thing by God. You can choose and break it, nip it in the bud. You can do those things. Again, I can choose. This is what you must do. The ways of God, the ways of the world. Be separate, saith the Lord, and come out from among them. So let us just finish there. I bring a lot of, to you, this, of this to you today, that you may learn to be cleansed and washed by the word of God. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by turning, taking heed to your word? Wherewithal shall a young woman cleanse her way by taking heed thereto according to your word? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and beseech you to do these things. God bless you and see you next time. Amen.